for uh, joining on the third uh, day on the for the oral awareness month which is uh, which where i can get along with the foundation for head and neck oncology sterling cancer hospital and gujarat university conducting this i can get second international oral cancer e conclave so a very warm welcome to everyone to this third day of scientific session so moving towards our uh, next session next talk i would like to invite dr ashok shunai and uh, for uh, as a speaker i would like to invite dr richa vash she is assistant professor in department of head and neck in tms mumbai uh and her topic of her talk is sentinel node biopsy so over to you uh, dr richa and over to you sir dr ashok mohan shunai sir yeah uh, uh, and uh, well uh, i know richa well and uh, uh, i would without much further ado let's hear a talk and then uh, we will uh, discuss it from that point so richa please uh, start your talk give a bit of history tell us how it has progressed and where it stands today okay uh, so uh, at the outset of my presentation i would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity and i'm going to talk about the sentinel node biopsy in oral cancer now elective neck dissection is the standard of care today in all uh, node negative early oral cancer and uh, this was well, well borne out uh, from a big trial from adam mill hospital where we showed that Eight elective neck dissection done save one life, and four elective neck dissection done prevent one recurrence. But there is also a problematic side to it. About fifty-five to seventy percent of the node negative patients are actually truly node negative, and doing the elective neck dissection in those patient is a over treatment. And the neck dissection is associated with the morbidity, which is mainly in terms of the nerve damage. So this is the data from the SEN trial by Ian Hutchison, which shows that the incidence of nerve damage can be as high as forty percent even in elective neck dissection, and nearly five percent of which of which can actually be very disabling. So in the past, multiple attempts have been made to identify uh, the true node negative patients through various imaging modality, ultrasound, CT scan, PET scan. But everything has a very a low sensitivity, ranging from about fifty to sixty six percent, and therefore this option was not a very feasible option. Attempts were also extended with gene expression and various molecular markers, but again a very low predictive value of about seventy two percent and high chance of missing the disease. So this also didn't work out. Now, sentinel node biopsy is a very well-established concept in melanoma and breast cancer, and for the past decade, it has been explored a lot in early node negative oral cancer. Now, what's a sentinel node? It's the concept says that spread of the tumor is embolic in nature via the lymphatics to the first echelon lymph node encountered in the regional draining basin. So, this is a node that is most likely to harbor the metastasis, and if this node doesn't have the metastasis, then that neck is truly a node negative, and probably the neck dissection can be spared in those patients. This concept was first explored a long time back in 2010 by Seventos, and they had operated upon 106 patients, 106 node negative patient, of which uh, sentinel node negative patient. On performing the completion neck dissection, 100 of which were truly node negative. So the negative predictive value in the study was 94 percent, and this improved to 96 percent with serial sub sectioning and immunohistochemistry. Since then, multiple meta-analyses have been uh, published, establishing the diagnostic accuracy of sentinel node biopsy. But the data was lacking on the therapeutic efficacy. And the first time it was provided by the SEN trial, when they published the three years outcome of 415 patients recruited over 14 centers in Europe. They showed that in addition to the high negative predictive value of 95 percent, this also has a very high disease-specific survival of 94 percent, and that established the therapeutic efficacy of the sentinel node biopsy in early oral cancer. But what was lacking in the literature was a head-on comparison with the elective neck dissection. And recently, we have seen in quick succession publication of two large randomized controlled trial in JCO. First of which was a French trial by Garrel et al., which was an equivalent randomized uh, trial to compare the treatment uh, based on the sentinel node navigated neck dissection and the elective neck dissection in T1, T2, N0 oral and oropharyngeal cancer. Now, this was a sentinel-oral trial, and the aim of this trial was to establish the equivalent. of sentinel node biopsy and neck dissection comparing the two years neck node recurrence free survival it also looked at the functional outcome in these patient 
So this is quickly to explain the trial schema. T1, T2, N0 oral and oropharyngeal cancers were randomized either to the elective neck dissection arm or to the sentinel node biopsy arm. Patients who underwent sentinel node biopsy were subjected to a frozen section and if the node was positive, then a completion neck dissection was performed in the same sitting. But if the node was negative, a further serial step sectioning and a immunohistochemistry was done. And if the node was negative, in those cases, a neck was spared. And if the node was positive, then a second stage completion neck dissection was performed. Now, this trial accrued 377 patients. However, two were, 28 were excluded because of the lack of invasion on the biopsy. And therefore, 279 patients were finally analyzed, 139 in the neck dissection arm and 140 in the sentinel node arm. The mean follow-up was around 5 years. And when they looked at the neck regional recurrence in the node negative neck in the elective neck dissection arm, it was 11. That is, 10.1% of the patients still had a regional recurrence after the elective neck dissection being reported pathological logically node negative and 8.1% when the sentinel node was negative still the patients had the recurrence and there was no significant difference in the two values. When they looked at uh, the overall survival in terms of the two years uh, neck node recurrence free survival here we see the curves that are totally overlapping with the recurrence free survival of 89.6% in the neck dissection arm and 90.7% in the sentinel node arm which established the, the confirmed the hypothesis that was proposed by the authors. The survival was also similar in terms of local regional recurrence free survival, disease specific survival, and overall survival with completely overlapping curve. So, this established the oncologic safety of the sentinel node biopsy. Coming on to the functional outcomes following the sentinel node biopsy, the median and the mean hospital stay was longer in neck dissection arm compared to sentinel node arm, and this difference was statistically significant. When they compared the number of physiotherapy prescription issued at 2 months, 4 months and 6 months, the rate was significantly higher in the neck dissection arm compared to the sentinel node arm. But we observed that at 12 and 24 months, the issue rate was similar. Now, this is a retard plot that uh, reports the questionnaire-based outcome. So, we can see uh, around here a lot of symptoms that are reported by the patients. These are the number of patients having the complaints. The inner dotted line is a sentinel node biopsy and outer solid line is a neck dissection. And this is the uh, survey performed at 2, 4, 6 and 12 months. Uh, in first two, uh, so first two graphs, we see a significant difference in terms of the symptoms in sentinel node biopsy and the neck dissection. But as we come to the six months, here we see that the difference is less and at 12 months, we see actually completely overlapping curves. So there is a, a associated morbidity, but over the period of time, it recovers. Again, looking at the arm abduction test, that is uh, abducting the arm at 180 without pain or effort. Here again, we see a larger number of patients were able to do so at 2, 4, and 6 months compared to the sentinel node biopsy arm, and this was statistically significant. But again, at 12 months and 12, 24 months, the rates were similar. This was quick, in quick succession followed by the Japanese trial, which was published in JCO in uh, 20, uh, 2021 in April. And again, this was a multicentric randomized control trial uh, involving 16 Japanese centers. This the sentinel node biopsy negative uh, navigated neck dissection non-inferiority compared to the elective neck dissection in T1, T2, N0 oral squamous cell carcinoma. The primary endpoint of the trial was three-year overall survival. This trial excluded the patient who had thinner tumors with depth of invasion equal to or less than 4 mm, stating the fact that the incidence of nodal metastasis is extremely low in this cohort. So, in this 97.1% of the patients underwent neck dissection compared to only 39.5% requirement of the neck dissection in the sentinel node arm. And during the follow-up arm, recurrence was observed in 18.2% and 21.6% of the patients in neck dissection and sentinel node biopsy group respectively. Again, they compared the false negative rate uh, in of regional metastasis in neck dissection was 10.5% compared to 15.1% in the sentinel node arm, but the difference was not statistically significant. The median follow-up of this trial was 3.1 years and they analyzed 271 patients. 33 patients were censored because of the lack of the event. And uh, when they looked at, it, looked at the survival curves, the three-year overall survival was 87.9% in the sentinel node biopsy arm compared to 86.6% in the neck dissection arm. Since uh, non-inferiority margin was set as 12%, 
and the three year overall survival in the sentinel node group was not inferior to the neck dissection so the hypothesis was confirmed again looking at the disease free survival the three year disease free survival was 78.7% in the sentinel node group compared to 81.3% in the neck dissection group and this was again non inferior when they looked at the questionnaire based functional outcome in terms of uh, stiffness constriction pain numbness shoulder drop reach above the shoulder neck appearance again there was a significant difference that was observed at least up to 12 months at uh, 6 months and many of the symptoms subsided by the end of 12 months in terms of arm abduction test again there was a significant difference that was apparent till the completion of 3 months and at 6 months and 12 months the rates were similar in terms of adverse event again there was a similar uh, adverse event in the two group one post operative death because of the myocardial infarction was observed in the neck dissection group and one because of the pneumonia in the sentinel node group recently we have a publication from tata memorial hospital that had extracted the individual level participant data from both the published curve of the randomized control trial and here again we see completely overlapping curve with more than 500 patients establishing the oncologic safety of this procedure so to conclude sentinel node is non inferior to end in terms of oncologic outcome sentinel node biopsy limits the morbidity which evens out at the end of one year and it shortens the hospital stay so with these with this evidence today we have a sentinel node biopsy as one of the suitable alternative in the management of neck in node negative early oral cancer thank you thank you uh, richard i think okay richard that was a wonderful presentation i was associated with the sentinel node way uh, uh, back in 1999 when i uh, attended the second uh, uh, sentinel node biopsy at zurich and before that there was one at the first one was at canisburn uh, initiated by david sutars group somehow when i came back and tried to do it at our center we used uh, uh, we didn't have the colloidal sulfur at that point in time and we didn't have the dynamic uh, gamma camera so our results were uh, certainly inferior in the sense that we had too many uh, false uh, negative we always followed all of our it was a pilot study and we always followed all our sentinel node biopsy with the uh, supraomoid neck dissection and we subserial section all the nodes into three parts and we looked at it so we thought uh, at that point in time that it was a lot of work for very little gain however uh, looking at the japanese trial and uh, the trial that was uh, you have uh, shared with everybody uh, we uh, do agree that uh, if you have the resources and if you have the time i i would like to ask this august audience how many of us who have the time to do a sentinel node biopsy because it takes extra about 4 to 6 hours uh, besides the procedure to do this and uh, the cost uh, is going to add up in uh, non uh, uh, teaching hospitals non aided hospitals uh, like uh, where you are doing it where you have to build the patient for everything including the time so you have to first do the injection then you have to do the uh, uh, dynamic uh, mapping then you have to uh, uh, after 2 hours again do a static mapping then take the patient to the theater and then you go ahead with the dissection and you may have more than one uh, lymph node as is uh, been the experience 2 to 3 uh, so there is a lot of learning curve in other ways so uh, i would like to ask this august audience would you like if you had uh, the facilities and uh, no added expenses would your uh, uh, case load uh, permit you to routinely do it there is no doubt uh, the morbidity is less as both the trials have shown us that all the morbidity levels out at 12 months so the, certainly it has got a functional value and obviously i just wanted to ask one thing uh, uh, richa all these cases uh, they used no other forms of adjuvant therapy uh, am i audible uh, i'm asking yes. you less than 4 centimeters <laughs> but if you have the depth that is going uh, below and you realize it only after the surgery and you have other sinister uh, components like perineural spread or perivascular spread 
that may be a uh, indication for adjuvant radiation therapy and there are radiation therapists in the panel i'd like to ask the uh, radiation oncologist whether in such a situation suppose you have a high risk primary and uh, the sentinel node biopsy negative would you like to irradiate only the primary and leave the uh, neck alone i mean these are all treading uh, these are areas controversial areas so i would like your input because i am not a radiation oncologist i would like to i would be scared to leave this case uh, unattended to especially in our country where the possibility of uh, patients disappearing uh, after the primary surgery i mean lost to follow so uh, i would like uh, you to just kind of uh, shed some light on that any radiation oncologist yeah. uh, <laughs> i am dr ashish agrawal radiation oncologist in max hospital vaishali please actually yeah, your uh, question is uh, uh, very pertinent but you know uh, it becomes very difficult for us to leave with the patient is having high risk features in primary uh, disease as you have said patient is having pni so uh all those central lymph node is negative maybe we will want to radiate actually uh, i have not treated such type of case central uh, lymph node biopsy is very new we are not doing routinely so maybe but at oh, this uh, point of time i want to do it dr pavan gupta you want to yeah, yes. i just uh, i just want to say this thing we have just started the central lymph node at max hospital and i have just done uh, recently we did three cases and uh, it's basically we are doing it as a learning process and we uh, even after doing the central lymph node we uh, complete the neck dissection at least the supra supramoid neck dissection so it's just a learning curve right now so it's too early to comment but right. we are still learning and i'm sure richa's presentation has uh, made us uh, uh, think better and uh, maybe we will improve on our uh, inputs